Hello, my name's Ashley. Thanks for watching my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a diaper sprayer. It's really easy. You don't need any plumbing experience necessary. If you make it yourself, you're only going to spend around $25 to $35. And if you buy it online, they range from $30, and I've actually seen them all the way up to $70. If you're not sure what a diaper sprayer is, it's just a kitchen sink sprayer that you've attached to your toilet and you just spray off your dirty cloth diapers. I love mine. I probably wouldn't want a cloth diaper without it because it's, it's very much a convenience. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first of all, you can get all of your pieces at Lowe's, Home Depot, a hardware store or plumbing store, and even Walmart. I got all of mine at Lowe's except for my kitchen sink sprayer. I got that one at Walmart. And this right here is a toilet connector. It's reinforced with PVC. It's 3 8 of an inch. It's 16 inches long. And you can buy them in 20 inches long, but I found that 16 was perfect. And everyone has one of these on the back of their toilet. So if you already have one, it's plastic or it's PVC like this one, you could just use that and you don't have to spend the additional five bucks on a new one. But if yours is made out of metal, then you definitely have to go out and get this one. And the reason why is this because we're gonna slice it with a knife, okay? And so we need a plastic one that's easily to cut. Next thing you're gonna need for the purpose of slicing your pipes is either a kitchen knife or a box cutter, a saw, just something sharp that you can cut your pipe with. You're gonna need a basic screwdriver that's flat, like this one. And then you're gonna need these little stainless steel clamps. They're number four and they're one fourth of an inch to five eight. And these are nice to have. You'll need about five of them for this project. This came in a package of 10, which worked out for me because I actually needed to make two diaper sprayers, but you only need five. And this is what they look like up close. And you just screw them on. You'll need a crimp tee, which is three eight of an inch. Looks like this. And definitely make sure you buy the one that's metal because I made the mistake of going out and buying one in plastic. Even though it said it was the same size, it was actually way too big. So I had to take it back and go find a metal version. So definitely get the metal version. The next thing you're gonna need is a ball valve. That's 3 8 of an inch. This is what it looks like. And this allows you to turn the water on and off. This is really great to have. It isn't necessary, you don't have to have it, but I definitely advise you to get one of these. And I'm gonna show you why later. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, you will need a ball valve, three eight of an inch. And last but not least, you need your kitchen sprayer with a hose, okay? And this is, let's see, deluxe sink sprayer head with hose. And I got this at Walmart because it's a lot cheaper there. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, or you know, hardware store, but I found that they're more expensive. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is open your kitchen sprayer, and you're just going to connect it. Pretty simple, just screw on the head. Screw it on pretty tight. Okay, and then you'll take the end right here and you're just going to cut this off you're gonna get as far down as you can right there and you're just gonna start cutting okay so here's what the end looks like when I've cut it off it's not perfect but you do want to try to get it as straight as you can and you can go back over it a little bit with a box cutter to even it off if you need to Okay, so about the next step that you want to take is you want to take the piece that you just cut, which I didn't get mine perfectly flat, but I tried. You want to count up about 16 inches. So starting from here and go up 16 inches. And then you want to go ahead and cut this piece in half, just like that. Just cut it completely in half. Okay, when you've made your cut, you should have a piece about 16 inches long. Looks just like this. And then you should also have your other hose piece like this. Um, eventually we're gonna connect it back together. But the reason why we cut it is because I wanted to install a ball valve. And what this allows you to do is turn your water on and off. So when you're done using your sprayer, you just switch this little lever off. 
And the reason why this is a really good thing to do and get in the habit of is because if you don't, the water pressure builds up right here and over time it can cause these to leak. So if you turn it off here, there's no pressure hitting this and it just extends the lifetime of your sprayer. Another good benefit of installing one of these is, you know, if a toddler or a kid sees this and goes, ooh, spray gun, they wanna, you know, make a mess in the bathroom. If you have it turned off, that prevents that from happening. Okay, so the last cut that we're gonna make is this um, toilet connector. You're gonna cut about halfway on the toilet connector and just cut it in half. After you've sliced your toilet connector in half, you're going to slide on these little screw clamps on each side, just like that. Then you're going to push the crimp tee into your hose on both sides, and it will require a little bit of strength to get them all the way on there. Then you're going to take the piece that you cut off of your sprayer, the hose, the smaller piece. You're going to insert the little screw clamp, and then you're going to push that in as well. Okay, once you've connected the two pieces together, it should look something like this. Then this is when you're going to want to tighten these screw clamps. You're going to put it in the end like that, and you want the screw head part, the big part, up here at the top, and you don't want it facing downwards because if you do that, then when you go to connect this piece and then you try to screw in that, these things will be in the way. So. Make sure you screw them in up here like this. Okay, so you can see I've screwed my screw clamps on and I did it really tight because you don't want it to leak water down the road. So you pretty much turn it until it won't turn and you can see how much hangs over here. And now we're ready to put the next piece on. All right, so Here's all three pieces attached together. That's what it should look like. And now we're gonna finish putting the hose that we cut in half back together. And we're gonna install the ball valve. And it's the same thing. You're gonna put clamp on each side and then put those in there just like that. Okay, so I have attached the ball valve and now I can turn the water on and off. And this is how it looks all together. Now let's go hook it up and see how it works. Here's what my diaper sprayer looks like all hooked up. And you can buy handles and things to attach them to your toilet where they kind of set like this. But I just installed one of these little hooks I got at Lowe's. And anyway, and here's where the ball valve is that I can turn the water on and off. And I did put some electrical tape around it to keep it from scratching up the porcelain. You can do that as well. And as you can see in the back here, it hooks to the toilet and to the wall. And then the sprayer comes out this way. Now I do want to make one note that for my toilet, I use 16 inch toilet connector. But when I went to install the one at my mother's house, hers needed a 20 inch. So make sure you measure for your own toilet and get the right size. So let's go ahead and use this. I would just flip this lid up like this, turn this on, and, and you can see I have a lot of pressure. One of the cool things about this ball valve is that you can increase the pressure with however far you turn it. So now I just turn the pressure down. So you, I don't have to turn it all the way on. I could turn it just slightly on you know, that barely has any pressure. But let's be honest, generally you're gonna turn it to the, you know, the highest pressure you can. I also have this little bucket here to catch drips and a little clipboard, sometimes I'll clip my diaper onto there to spray it off. But um, in another video, I will show you my spraying techniques and some things I do to make spraying my diaper easy. So stay posted for that. And I really hope you enjoy your new sprayer. It was really easy to make. And have a good day.